G'day folks, today we're taking a look at Windows Codename Whistler build 2446 compiled on the 24th of February 2001. Now, I almost didn't want to make a video on build 2446 because there's not too much in the way that's special about this build. I'm just going to use it primarily as a bit of a stopgap to talk about other Whistler builds I won't be exploring in this series. But you all know that I tend to do that anyway with each passing build, or at least to the best of my ability. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with running the upgrade process. And we'll get started with talking about some of the other builds that I'm not going to be able to take a look at that precede this build. Although, as you can see, there are some notable differences, mainly the new Windows flag in the setup, and it still mentions Whistler, but we'll get on to some other things like that. As you can see, it also uses the new Windows flag on the sidebar here, and a lot of the text is probably going to be the same, if not maybe slightly tweaked, so do expect that if you're paying attention to the screen. Okay, product key has been entered and the setup is now continuing. As you can see, at this stage it mentions that it is a beta 2 build. Now 2446 by itself is not actually beta 2, it's pre-beta 2, but as you probably get the idea, of course, that's to be expected. So let's talk about some of the preceding builds. First with build 2432, which was compiled on the 3rd of February 2001. Now 2432 was basically like 2428 if you will. The big difference though was that it was the first build to reveal Windows XP branding. Now you know this would make sense at the time because I believe it, uh, February 4th 2001 was when they officially revealed Windows XP as a product name to the public. So this 2432 build would actually have that kind of branding even though otherwise it would have been branded like Windows Whistler builds would have been at this phase. Now this build was actually revealed at the Museum of Pop Culture in Seattle, Washington. And I don't know if there is any particular uh, announcements there other than the Windows XP name. But one thing that is noted about 2432 is it is the first build to have the final looking smaller icons in the Windows Explorer compared to build 2428 and 2430 which of course we're not taking a look at 2430 because there's literally nothing different with 2430 compared to 2428 like at all. The next build worth discussing is 2433, which was pretty much compiled very similarly to 2432. Now, don't quote me on this. I want to say it was the 6th of February 2001 as its compilation date, but I'm probably wrong on this. So don't, you know, get on me too much in the comment section if I'm wrong, but I anyways. <clears throat> 2433 was updated to incorporate internet connection uh, options in the out-of-box experience, and it would ask for necessary connection settings. Now, of course, as you know, in XP, it would always ask like, hey, are you gonna connect to the internet? Are you going to uh, basically you know, provide internet connection, like IP address and all that sort of stuff? So it was incorporated in build 2433. And another interesting note is the personal SKU was the only one that was leaked. Now, we've seen screenshots of the professional version, but they have actually not leaked the professional ISO as it stands. So we don't actually know what's different with the professional SKU versus the personal SKU. But I wouldn't expect much considering 2433 is very similar to the prior builds, just with Whistler branding, if you will. The last build that's probably preceding this one that's worth discussing is 2442, which actually was leaked in uh, simplified Chinese, compiled on the 17th of February 2001. And the only reason why this build is being noted was not only just because of the fact it was in simplified Chinese, but also there was a, a Chinese software developer network forum thread regarding build 2442, regarding installing drivers for a modem on the 22nd of May, 2001. So the build technically leaked in air quotes sometime between its compilation date and between this forum post on May 22nd, 2001, but nobody's actually ever seen it surface anywhere. So we really don't know 
what to say about this build other than yes it technically does exist you know the proof is there but you get the idea anyway which brings us now to build 2446 which is what we are upgrading from 2428 as you can see the setup has different fonts different sizing and of course it still incorporates the modern-ish windows flag for this release the text is otherwise the same but it's been tweaked slightly to uh, obviously incorporate the Windows XP Luna visual style. Now with build 2446, it was compiled again on the 24th of February, 2001. And at this time, it still refers itself as Whistler, despite the Windows XP branding having been released earlier, which this is probably true because it was still an internal Microsoft uh, build, if you will, like it was still an internal development. A notable change is the CD player has been removed which, you know, big whoop. You know, in Windows 2000, it, it was the last version to use the CD player application as the CD player functionality was integrated in Windows ME in Media Player 7, but they hadn't like taken out the CD player application from the NT side of Windows. So this release removes that unnecessary CD player in favor of using the Windows Media Player instead. And otherwise, that's, all there really is to say about 2446, it's visually similar to the past build we took a look at. It functionally is very similar other than the removal of the CD player. It's not got any weird quirks with instability or corrupt files or whatever the case might be. And there's no extremely new, like anything. There's no new sounds. There's no new Windows XP branding anywhere. So at this phase, that's really all there is notable about 2446 was woohoo. It's got the new Windows flag in the setup and the CD player was removed. So that's all I can really say about this build. So I'm gonna wait until we get to some other interesting part and I'll pick back up then. As you can see, there's a new please wait screen using the codename Whistler Beta 2 like boot screen visual style, as you can see. The nice four colors on the bar range there. At this phase, it would actually ask you if you needed to change the resolution, if I'm not mistaken, from 640 by 480 to 800 by 600. As you can see, that old Whistler clip still plays. Welcome to Whistler. I'm here to help you set up your new computer. I can explain things as you move along. Anytime you need help, just click in me with the mouse or press E with one key. I'll be right here if you need me. So there's our wonderful Merlin entrance. So now we can go ahead and get through the out of box experience which largely is the same as 2428. Like I mentioned before, the only difference is that new Windows flag. Yeah, we were gonna definitely activate within the next 14 days. Sure, why not? I'm gonna be sharing this computer with other users. I'm gonna say for now, no. Although I don't believe they introduced any new profile pictures, so it's not really anything to really go crazy about. And since I did an in-place upgrade, it does not ask me for network settings or anything of that nature because, well, let's just face it, uh, it's an upgrade, it's already been set. So let's log in. As you can see, it changes the color from the Windows 2000 color to the XP shade of blue. And as you can also tell, because I had clear type turned on in 2428, it automatically turned it back on. It looks like my bug from 2428 where it wouldn't play the logon sound has been fixed. Now it plays the logon sound, which is in this build still the Windows 2000 sounds. And here we are at the desktop. Now, as you can see, the fade in effect for the taskbar has been removed. It is no longer there, which is unfortunate, but it was how it was in the final release of XP where the, um, the taskbar didn't fade with any visual styles. There's also in the start button, it doesn't reflect it right now, but there's also a new drop shadow added to this start logo, 
uh, for this Windows flag. It was not there previously, it was just there. So now it makes it look a little bit closer to the final release, but not quite. Also, there's a drop shadow added to the text inside of the start menu. And otherwise, it's pretty much identical to the start menu in 2428. In fact, I even think a lot of the visual elements are still going to be the same. Uh, there is a new drop shadow added to the text. It's very faint, but you can see it. And otherwise, it's virtually the same. I don't know why it turns off the clear type on this computer, I guess, because it can't handle it or something of that nature, even though it very obviously can. And otherwise, um, I'll just eject my flash drive here. Let's see if the sound effects for that are the same. Huh, <laughs> nice. It looks like an iOmega drive when you eject it. That's pretty uh, hilarious, even though it's just a USB stick. And interesting, it also shows the, like a hover tooltip thing down here. I'm not sure what that's all about. And the spacing is a little bit uneven, but it's whatever. So going inside of some other spots in the Windows Explorer, interesting, there's a new icon for the MSN Messenger service. I wonder if that'll do anything. Let's open it up. Ah, here we are. Welcome to MSN Messenger service. This program helps you stay in touch with your friends online. You can see if people you know are online, send and receive instant messages, and control who can see and contact you. This wizard guides you through the setup process. Sure, let's go ahead and set it up. Get a free passport. Oh, that's right. In Windows XP, when it first came out, the .NET Passport was introduced, which is effectively a very ancient version of what we now know today as the Microsoft account. Basically, it was a account that associated different Microsoft services like Hotmail or whatever have you alongside MSN Messenger and probably some other Microsoft related services at the time, including MSN and, you know, Messenger and all that stuff. So anyways, yeah. So you could get a passport. It would direct you to Internet Explorer. As you can see, the new icons are here. We'll get back to those later, as you've probably also seen in the Explorer. They look a little different. Oh, interesting. So they make you actually uh, sign in at this time. And there's also a hint if anybody has a Passport.com email address, let me know, because I'd be interested to hear about that. But basically, this is interesting. I'm surprised that it's asking me about it. Anyways, I'm not going to like really install it now that it asks for that, because there's no need. The service has obviously long since been deceased, and there's no way that I'd be able to take a look at it without hacking it, which I'm not interested in doing for this video for the sake of time. But anyways, you get the idea. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the elements inside of Windows Explorer that were previously not working properly. The picture tasks pane here on the side used to have a music folder icon, but as you can see, it's been updated with a new picture tasks related uh, icon here. And it also gives you better uh, print things. Now I believe in 2428, I mentioned that the order of prints from the internet was the wrong icon and it was like a glow icon of some kind. Well, I was correct because that I believe is the final icon they used was a little globe with a picture on it and there's a new slideshow feature as well which is pretty cool and actually speaking of some of the icons you might have noticed in the explorer the icons are significantly less large than they were in 2428 and they're also a little bit more refined looking now these back and forward navigation buttons are not the final versions, but they're much closer to the final ones than the 2428 icons. This go up folder icon had a little bit more of a defined arrow instead of a flat green. It had like a more plasticky green looking arrow, but otherwise the same thing. Search is basically final, folders is final, and this little views thing is also finalized as well as, well, everything else about the icon spacing. It was most apparent in Internet Explorer where the icons that are new take effect. As you can see, they are significantly smaller in size. And as you can see, the refresh icon looks like the final. And virtually everything except for the favorites icon is pretty much finalized. Now, and these messenger icons here, but those are related to the old MSN messenger. So there's nothing much I can really say there. And as you can see inside of Internet Explorer's About box, you can see it still uses the classic Windows flag. It still has a copyright of 2000 on it, which is interesting. But as you can see, it still says, or it now says build 2446. 
And of course the music should be updated. Yep, it's just a music note. It's not a music note in a folder anymore. And my videos still shows picture tasks. Interesting. So they haven't gotten to this feature yet, but I'm sure that they will get to there. There's also some interesting terminology differences like throw away this file. Well, I mean, that's not the final terminology. They would have just called it delete this file. I think it would have had a red X icon on it rather than the recycle bin with the handles. But otherwise, maybe the rename thing was a little different, but otherwise they got everything else correct at this phase. So it's just these little updates and differences that are what are apparent the most in this build. It still says more programs down here. And another thing you may have noticed is the uh, slide up effect for the start menu is still here. Obviously this wasn't in the final release of XP and I believe if you go, oh, it's still got the older pictures here. You can see a little reference to the MSN Messenger thing in here too, which is also new in this build. And interesting, it still has the classic Windows flag and the Luna theme inside of here as well, which I'm kind of surprised by that. But anyways, um, I believe, yeah, in, under the advanced menu here, you can see the animate start menu as it opens feature is still in this build. But just like in XP, it just popped in like this. Well, not with the same extent of like everything popping in, but like it would not have the slide up effect like this build does. And interesting, there are no icons for any of the shortcut functions inside the start menu at this time. They're just using an arrow. That's fascinating. Anyways, so let's see if there are any other differences. Let's take a look at like the Windows Movie Maker. I think did this have a different build on it? I don't know. All I know is that it still uses the older Windows logo at this phase. And I believe the same can go for Windows Media Player. I uh, about to view pages over secure connection. Wait, wait a minute, is my ethernet card actually working now? I don't actually know. Um, where is device manager? I'm gonna go look at that real quick because I actually don't know. Hey, hey, it actually, they got the driver for my ethernet card in there now. No wonder it was trying to connect to the internet. So, okay, in 2428, I did not have any drivers for my ethernet card, but in 2446, they actually added it. Well, that's really cool. So at least now, if I really, really wanted to, which I'm not probably going to go into great depth about it, I could technically browse the internet on an early Whistler build like this, which is pretty cool. Of course, it's using Internet Explorer 6, so I don't really think anything of any significance is going to load. I mean, maybe about the most that I could see loading is Google and, you know, woohoo. Yeah, this is a slightly different build number but otherwise it's pretty much visually the same. And I believe that's, yeah, it's still got Windows Update as the, using the older icon. And Movie Maker still uses the older icon down here and the folder icons are pretty much still the same, but they are, they are probably going to be updated in a later build. Just for fun, let's go see if Windows Update actually opens here on Internet Explorer. I don't think so, but what the heck, for fun. Yeah, I didn't think so. It just redirects to this link that doesn't open anymore. Of course, Windows Update no longer works because Microsoft has killed off all the SHA1 downloads for Windows Update, which means you can't download updates any longer for operating systems, including the 9X versions, 2000, and XP, and then Vista is also affected. Uh, Windows 7 out of the box can't download updates, you have to have a special SHA2 patch uh, standalone update installed, and then that'll allow Windows Update to actually function. But otherwise, yeah, it's pretty much been killed off. And of course, you also probably need like Windows XP Service Pack 3 in order to even touch Windows Update in the first place. So, woohoo. Let's take a look at Control Panel. And yeah, the icons pretty much look the same, although I will say, the user accounts look the final version. If you remember, the, uh, the the colors were all different with the user accounts icon, but this is now the final release icon. Otherwise, all the other icons look the same as before. If we go into classic view, let's see if there's any additional ones that have been updated here. So this is still the same as before, same as this, this, uh, this, 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 this this. I think those are all still 2,000 derived icons, except for, of course, the system icon, but we know that already. 
and it's still got the Windows 2000 icon in Explorer as well. And lastly, I suppose we can take a look at the My Computer panel, which still refers to this operating system as Windows 2000. And interestingly, at this time, it calls my Pentium 3 a 498 megahertz, even though in 2428 it said it was a 500 megahertz. I don't know what that's about, but either way. The kernel number is 5.01.2446, so woohoo. And yeah, otherwise, that's pretty much all I can say about 2446. Hopefully you liked what you saw, and if you did, well then click the thumbs up button. If you didn't like it so much, well then the other button does work as well. If you want to see more content just like this, there's the subscribe button down below. I would recommend clicking on it, as well as the bell, so you don't miss when I upload new videos. And with that having been said, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.